Today we'll be neutering a male cat. I'm Dr. Meggs and this is Everyday Vet. I make a scrotal incision to do a cat neuter because of their different anatomy. So in the dog, there's a fairly decent amount of space sitting between their scrotum and their penis, but that's not the case for the cat. So the penis actually sits directly below that scrotum. And if I were to try to do my incision outside of the scrotum, I could accidentally cut into the urethra, which would cause significant damage to the urinary tract. So instead we do that scrotal approach for the cat. Now that I've got the testicle exteriorized, I have to pull it further out of the body, that way I can get access to the blood vessels that are connecting to the testicle. And when I'm pulling on this, I'm expecting two distinct pops. Once I've got those two pops, I know that I've pulled far enough. Okay, that was the first pop. The second one's a little bit more gradual, as you'll see. And there's the second pop. Now that I have that cord adequately exteriorized, I can use my hemostats in order to tie a knot in the cord. Cat vessels are small enough that we can tie them in a knot rather than using suture. Anytime we use foreign materials such as a suture, there's going to be a risk of reaction or rejection by the body. So with this method, called autoligation, the body's own tissues are being used, so we've eliminated the risk of reaction. I always make sure to check my knot for bleeding before I let go of it. If I were to let go of it and then it starts bleeding, I have to go find those vessels. But if I notice the bleeding now while it's still in my hands, I can easily address it before it becomes a problem. Inside the scrotum is a tissue layer called the scrotal septum, and it divides it into two separate compartments. So the left testicle is actually separated from the right testicle. And because of that, I'm making a second incision in order to access that right testicle. I'm continuing to apply pressure underneath the testicle in order to push it up towards that skin layer. This allows me to make the smallest incision possible that still allows me to exteriorize the testicle. I'm going to use gauze again, um, this just helps with my grip. I can loosen the cord more efficiently if I'm able to apply consistent tension, but I can't be consistent if the testicle is sliding out of my hand. This testicle doesn't want to seem to loosen and I'm having to apply quite a bit of pressure here. So I was definitely struggling a bit more with this one than I was with the left testicle. There's that first pop. It's loosening, but I'm not really getting a pop on it. I've got enough of the cord exteriorized that I have plenty of room to make my knot, so I'm, I'm worried that if I keep pulling, I may accidentally tear the vessels internally, which would of course result in bleeding. So instead of doing that, I'm jumping right in and tying the knot now. Looks like I got the whole testicle removed, so we can proceed. Can I have some surgical glue, please? To apply a little bit of glue there in order to close up those incisions. They're small enough that I don't need to place any suture material. Well, you can turn them off, SIBO. I'm done. And that brings us to the end of his surgery. If you have any questions or comments for me, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. 
And if you enjoyed watching this surgery, be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel. If you want to be notified when I post next, be sure to turn on that bell icon. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Megs, and this is Everyday Vet.